welcome back to the Lords of Loud. We're just four music fans living in Australia who love a bit of a debate about music. Uh, we thought we'd move our email discussions and rants into the podcast era. I'm Lord Ben, King of the Lords, and uh, Beatles Tragic, uh, prog rock fan, and I'm your host. And as always, I have with me uh, Brett, Lord Brett, who has the uh, the perfect hair for any podcast. I have with me Lord Al. He's the uh, he's a living anachronism, a man who loves Seal and Slayer. That's the both of them. And of course, uh, we have Lord Kev, and it's not really his accent that makes him hard to understand. We have no, you know, expertise, no, no credentials, no mm. expertise to do so, but we just love it. So, back into it. And this episode, we're going to be talking about the moment that you lost faith or yeah, detached, detached from a particular band. Yeah, you you might have loved their first couple of albums and then yeah. all of a sudden something came out and you just couldn't follow them on that journey any further. Goodbye, so, goodbye so, Marillion. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, Al, for you, was it the White Album for the Beatles? Up uh, until then you were on board, but then that's when you dug down. <laughs> that's right, when I was still a twinkle in my dad's eye. <laughs> <laughs> the White Album did it for you. <laughs> Um, what well, was disappointing? Let's just say that. Um, no, for me it was uh, it was Iron Maiden. Um, no prayer for the dying. So they'd already done seven albums, and unfortunately, uh, I got into heavy metal. Seven albums in is pretty deep. Just like, was, oh, yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah. deep in. Yeah, like, that's I mean, you know. But, but, like, but oh, hang on, I wonder hang on. if these guys are going to be good or not. You know, one no, or no. two albums. But hang on, seven hang on. Album, that's yeah, a career, I need, I need some. Know? I need some background. Yes. Were you around? Were you listening when they released? You didn't listen to seven albums before you no, said no. That's so. You came in. When I came in on the seventh album, right? And then and you listened to the and you six lost beforehand. No, no. I listened. I listened to the. I listened. So I listened to all the. As soon as they started, you went. Oh. <laughs> This is the first album I've ever done. I mean, I the first well, that, was, that was me with Seal. I was like, I didn't even yes, listen to his first album. Right. I was already out. That's yeah. right. So, so you came in at the seventh album, which is Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Of course Come it on. is. Of course. Why didn't I think of that? And you then went and did the back catalogue. Oh my God. Well, no, I don't. I, I think, I think Seventh Son may have just about to be released or whatever. So I started listening to the back catalogue from there, started off with the early stuff and then jumped ahead a few albums because it was based on what my cousins had and what I could borrow. Um, and eventually, you know, filled up And you the were gaps. sold. And you were sold. Yeah, sold, sold. And then, you know, Seven Sun came out and I was like, oh, good, you know, it's still a bit different to the other ones. There's a bit more synth in it. You know, some of the songs are a bit longer. I'm not sure if I like all that, but anyway. More proggy is what you're saying. A bit more say. proggy, a bit yeah. more proggy, yes. Yeah. Um, oh, God. Yeah, I, can but, see, I can see what the problem was then. No, that's the thing. I only realised many years later that a lot of the a lot of their stuff is proggy generally. Absolutely, um, it's prog metal. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was quite an eye opener. Anyway, ancient mariner. So, what's that? Ancient mariner. Yes. Oh my god. Epic. Whatever it was, thirty minutes or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, I should have seen. I should have seen the signs. Um, but yeah, then um, no prayer for the dying came out. So. That's you know, right. That's the right album. That was the right one. And what year are we talking? 1990. Right. So I was, you know, still in high school. So it wasn't like I'd totally grown out of, you know, yeah. metal or anything. It yeah. was just like. You still had some angst. Yeah, still had a little bit of angst yep. there. Um, and uh, yeah, this came out and it was a different sound. It was harsher. Rora, the singer, wasn't singing as well as he used to. Wasn't as operatic. Not as operatic. Um, operatic? Fine yeah. made and operatic, okay. Yeah. Well, they, didn't, they, didn't oh. they dropped off they dropped off the proggy stuff. They went yeah. they tried to go a little bit too thrash. They yeah. tried to catch on to that new thrash sound. Yeah, oh, that's really the thing. They? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the, well I mean, the sound, no, no, not pre -grunge. Much at all. It was no, it was just pure Yeah, British heavy metal. Okay. Type of thing and it was yeah um that, that's what they'd been they'd gone proggy but then yeah it was just this really stripped back ugly sound mm. to it mm. uh, like the sound that they'd had was i guess a little overblown by the time they 
you know, had finished with the uh, the seventh album, but then it just all went to shit. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like Metallica did as well. It's just like they had this great production for a little while with uh, Bob Rock mm. and the and the Black Album, um, and then it, yeah, that has progressively got worse yeah. as they were trying to find a new sound. Yeah, I think that's often for the bands. It is it can often be signalled by a change of producer, or mm. they'll hit a certain level of of you know uh, fame or yeah, like um, popularity, mm. and go okay, we need to do something different now, and yeah, you know, move into a different direction or whatever. So it's, yeah. yeah, I mean, you can't blame them for wanting to find something different, but it was sure. just a point where it was just like, yeah, no. But and you're then, gonna get yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna isolate some of your audience by moving in a yeah. different direction all yeah. the time. You know. And I mean, past that point, um, I stopped listening to them um, just generally as well because musical tastes change, whatever. So I look mm-hmm. at some of it now, and it's like, well, it's it's quite silly, really. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still, you know, like just about every song that I like is on their Live After Death double album. And I think I've bought like two extra songs on top of that because it's like, okay, well, that's pretty much all I like. And the first, maybe the first two albums as well. So. so, so you sort of feel that, you know, that seven albums, those first seven albums were enough for you. Like, yeah, like, I like think... you know, that's you're almost saying, because in my head, that's pretty wild that they can put out seven albums well, and, yeah. you, and you to feel comfortable that you would be happy listening for the rest of your life only to those seven albums. But but that's the thing. Like I, yeah. I couldn't listen to all seven albums now. I still, it's still of a team. In, in like you're growing up you know yeah yeah but, so but it's I mean, almost like at that confluence of you know the album wasn't quite what you enjoyed about it before but also yeah. the metal thing is more of a younger person thing or whatever yeah I mean my taste ahead, would have been go, changing out, as well I'm out you yeah, know yeah yeah for what so you're not as angry anymore well that's the thing I mean I made my really angry music no um, I mean, some M- of the was like play, not angry, lyrically. Isn't it? Like yeah. it's, it's kind of like fun, angry. It's yeah. like, Oh, we're getting a room and put on leather. Yeah, like, yeah, it's not yeah, real. Thing, I mean, lyrically, like, there was nothing. It was kind it's of like, like ah. It's not. Yeah, but the know, thing, as a as a prog fan, obviously, clearly, the thing I liked about metal was was the more theatrical type of metal, the mm. more storytelling, the more yeah. you know, building up sequences of songs, that like more proggy metal stuff, like yeah. where it was telling a story over over multiple movements hmm. uh, yes it was heavier yes it, you know the guitar obviously you know it was all a uh, different sound but it was it was still taking you on a journey from point a to point b and you know there was a there was a sort of uh, often a lot of either sci-fi or fantasy lyrics involved in the hmm. in the stuff and yeah some and and the thing about metal is the virtuosic virtuosic Virtuosity? 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 Viscosity? Virtu- viscosity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The virtuoso playing of yes, the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, the, of the performance. Of, so, the, of, the, of the idiots in the, in the bones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, um, yeah, I, I, I think there is a lot in common with, with prog rock and, and metal, obviously. I mean, it sort of evolved out of that, but... Um, then, then I think in the '80s, you turn it, it became more of that. I think with the post-punk stuff, became you t- it started to turn into thrash. It t- started to turn into. Hmm. I think metal saw this thing where okay, we have to distance ourselves from that sort of storytelling element and the sort of that sort of prog element. We need to start being more authentic, more sort of just raw, hmm. yeah, which which I think eventually developed into into sort of your more thrash type. Yeah. Obviously, you had your branches off. With your hair metal and yeah. which came from sort of glam <laughs> oh, yeah. and that sort of stuff. But, Numerous uh, genres. But I think there were certain. Genres, so. Yeah, and I, then, I have to say, like that's one of the things I just love about metal. Like I love it. It's almost mathematical in its mm. in its divisions. Yeah. It's it's a uh, genreism. It's just so fantastically yeah. unending, <clears throat> right? Yeah, and you yeah. can see you can see all you want about. Um, Oh, however cool or uncool the music idea is, mm. but I just adore the fact that there's unashamedness to it. Like, and how mm. all this classification. Yeah, and, and people just go like, you know, there's there's a great there's a great genre I love, which is like basically operatic metal, and it's really mm. popular in like Nordic countries yeah. and stuff. And it goes back to their like mm. singing traditions, yeah, beer hall traditions. But this is- and so they have these guys writing this sort of operatic sort of. Um, 
you know, sing along mm. things. They're basically writing songs yeah. that everyone in the room going like, oh, no, 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 you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's a metal genre, right? There, there's, yeah. That's the way I see There's no coolness attached to it. It's just like, everyone's just like, mm. let's go for this. Mm. It's fun. But in a lot <laughs> yeah. of ways, in a lot of ways, yes, there are all, there is as many facets to metal as there are to, say, just straight rock or whatever. Like, well, it's a bit like dance music is I almost see the place that I see where there's so many yeah. subgenres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I almost you, see you, that everyone you, takes it very seriously. See where, you, what, where the line breaks. That's mm. it. But I almost Just see metal of, like with dance music how Yeah, as being a mirror of is. traditional rock but with a with almost a, a dark tint over it. You know, like it's like let's take a mirror of normal rock. You've got progressive, you've even got like folk rock, you've got different, you know you call it punk we call it thrash well, yeah like yeah. you've got this thing you've got this sort of you've copied a branch of like all this branching of normal rock and then but you just overlay this sort of dark tint Ooh. over the top of it almost like a metallic tint <laughs> yeah. a metallic hey. a metallic tint if you will <laughs> you know what you did there bro yeah yeah like, the shadow <laughs> yes, the shimmery shimmery oh. tint over it shadow Sorry, world. but it's almost like that it has Ooh. it's like it's own it's like the it's like the web and the dark web it's like it's own yeah, yeah. mirror of what's going on in the rock world but in a in a darker form and in a they can get you know. Viagra that's <laughs> right <laughs> yeah or, or, like, or arrested so, so you, you you know that's the interesting thing about bands that you you, you leave behind I mean I've certainly left bands behind in my youth mm. that I don't listen to anymore which is different from maybe maybe it isn't actually but okay. stuff did, you, did you, you leave them behind because they changed direction well, you look back now and you, you go well, I was a bit embarrassed to, to even leave <laughs> well, you just them didn't need the them anymore place. did you move on or did they move on maybe that never changes maybe it's just you know your perspective of yourself at the time mm. that you're thinking oh I'm more astute now I'm more like into this and more into that like it might just be a trigger that you're kind of like oh or, or just coincidence I've done some sort of um, retroactive listening to things you know I've gone mm. back and listened to say bands like Simple Minds who I, would, I loved man you know for a couple of very seminal years in high school uh, primary school even you know like that just discovered them and went oh these guys are amazing I really really want to be into this mm. and you know got right into it for a bit uh, and like the album itself kind of doesn't you know you know click anymore but yeah. I've already left that so far behind it's not really yeah. Mm. yeah it's more I guess I guess the idea about this is like what Alan says is like after a certain point after loving them for a few albums in a row you just go ah, I'm out mm. you know and, yeah, and I always find it amazing that that it can be so final and, and it's almost to the point where who cares what they did after that you don't even bother listening. It's Your just, feelings it's, are hurt. Yeah. It, yeah, it's right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly. It's yeah, a rebellion. Yeah, that, that hurt you. It's a rebellion. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And you've lost them, and, and they can never get you back. I've yeah. got I've got a mate called Bob, and he he sure, feels Bob. about Bob flaming Bob. lips, <laughs> like like that. He just uh, he just hates. Well, after Yoshimi and the, yeah, what did they do? I mean, they lost me after that, and that that was like literally one album, and then gone. Yeah, yeah, and and we, we were huge fans of of theirs all. Like they were really kind of just this kind of shining light of originality and creativity. Like mm. the first few albums that came out, just but then it was, and it just got bland. And and I seen them live a couple of times here in Brizzy, and they kind kind of just did this show where oh we're big now. And um, we're mm. going to play some hits, and we're just going to put on a show, a bit like what we were talking about when we talked about front men, like Wayne mm. Coyne. He's a great front man, and they've decided to just put on a big show, and they have dress up, you know, bunny rabbits and like zorbing on the crowd, and it's a great party time. Mm. And, and Wayne's just shouting at you to have a great time and enjoy yourselves, motherfuckers. Yeah, you know, yeah. and you're like, um, write some songs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, like, write something to get us excited. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, but I that's... really preferred them and loved them. In fact, when they were putting out albums like Hit to Death and Future Head. And just bit by bit, it's going down, 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 and you're like, "Oh fuck, I'm I'm off," yeah. mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And the last mm-hmm. album they brought out was something like Embryonic Something or Others, and I actually quite liked it, but they lost me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, they defended yeah, yeah. me to the yeah. point where, like, this is a really experimental, difficult, and hard album. Yeah. Just the kind of stuff I totally love and everybody else hates. It's the old thing. You get into it, yeah. but they've like they've burned me. Yeah, it's, it's the old thing. Like, it's so much harder to. 
get a new client than to retain an existing client thing, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's like yeah. once you've lost somebody, it's so much harder to get them back. I'm afraid it is. And, Although that's yeah. complete marketing speak, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. True. And you're right, because, because um, uh, you know, the U2 album where they gave it to everyone for free. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I never listened to it. No. Now, at one point, I was a big U2 fan, but to the point of the, the music was there... Yes. For me to listen to. Yeah. But completely get- free, and I didn't listen to it. Yeah. Now, they lost me before then. Sure. Right? Yeah. What album? Oh. Joshua yeah. Tree. I can't no, remember no, no, the- no, 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 because I – that's when I came in. What? Right? Because Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Australian. So they came. I came to them late and did a little bit of backspinning. Oh, that's really interesting. And then went, you know, Rattle and Hum was a bit of a misstep. They went to some of the modern stuff. I didn't mind that, but they sort of lost me along the way, right? Oh, right. And then I get a f- one of their albums for free mm. in my iTunes, sure. and I can't and I can't even be bothered to listen to yeah. it. Which is really interesting to say yeah. that you won't you won't give mm. up three minutes of your life mm. to listen to one of these songs. So, uh, no, I can't do yeah. it. But that comes down to them devaluing themselves in your eyes by giving away their stuff for free. But see, I didn't... If they charged... Yeah, but I didn't care about that. I didn't... Mm. Seriously, I honestly didn't care whether they put that in or not. But what's interesting is, you know, that... You just wouldn't. I just don't. And 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 it's not even... It's not even a big... You know, I'm not sitting there going, oh, my God, I will not. It's like, no, no, skip, whatever. It's just Mm. like a... And and it's, it's really interesting. See, the interesting thing for me is... Uh, David Bowie, Let's Dance, right? No. Couldn't get it. Mm-hmm. Had had come in just before then and did some back, because, you know, young enough to, to, not have, to not have been through all of it before Let's Dance. Let's Dance, I was a teenager. Couldn't get into it. And, and it, you know, he sort of lost me for a long time since then because it just seemed so different. To everything else he did, everything else he did, and again, it was um, you know, a, a young kid looking in retrospective of what he had done up to that. That was all really cool, but couldn't get this new street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this new sort of white pop singer couldn't get it. Mm-hmm. Whereas all the old stuff, you know, wow, that's really cool and really groovy. And, and I tell you what's fascinating because it's, it reminds me of the the story I've told you guys about me and my wife Heidi. And Prince and how mm. like I checked out of Prince at the same moment as he checked in. Checked like, in yeah. I I loved Let's Dance against all kind of better judgment. Do you know what I mean? Like I mm. loved mm. that song like so much. And I just started playing mm. the drums and I could it's just such a really strong drum track. Mm. And I kind of didn't want to like it as much as I did. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but I think I had like a bit of a boy crush on David Bowie. Sounds like, like a guilty he was pleasure. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just really handsome guy or whatever. And like, it was just like that kind of weird little. Like, and everyone's got their own story, and it's so interesting how it cross. You know, crosses against your own sort of age or you know culture, or whatever. Like, I I love David Bowie when he did. Um, Ashes to Ashes and stuff like that. And yeah. it was like one of the mm. first, you know, um, songs that I ever like that was just phenomenal when I yeah, had it on yeah. tape and it was like Yeah, so that was, was the end of Bowie for me. I knew I was gonna like yeah. really like music now because like there was some older guy giving Ooh. me a tape of Bowie and it was like Ashes were on there and like Fizzage and other, you know, mm. Ultra mm. Fox and people like that mm. and it was like, Oh man <laughs> like can, <laughs> My whole world has opened up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It was so, mm. that that tape for me was like the gateway to, yeah, yeah. to mm. all of this other stuff. You know, and I left behind a lot from Marillion and people like that, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and so just I think it's really funny that, you know, they can cross off like that. And, like, for me, you two, again, being more local to it, was, like, there was a national pride thing there. Like, we were all really just proud of them, how well they were doing. And, um, like, right up to sort of Live Aid time. Yeah. You know, and they just were, like, huge and, like, everyone liked them. Hmm. And you couldn't believe it. Like, hmm. Everyone liked them. Like all across the people actually liked them. <laughs> and then they just went from there then to like yeah. stratospheric yeah. thing. Yeah. And it was hmm. like, oh something was gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was probably set apart from me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. You know? um, in a side note, do you buy into this whole um, I don't know if you've even heard this, there's there's this scientific study that came out 
that's saying that after fourteen, after up to fourteen, is when you sort of absorb different types of music and you start to form your, yeah, your best, yeah, you know, what you like in music and fourteen. That. Yeah, and after fourteen, you're pretty much fixed in what you like in music. It's very hard for something to sort of break into that into what you've already formed as your sort of vision of, of what you I like in music. How, I don't know how anyone would formulate that understanding. Like, how could you encapsulate all the types of music and compare and compra- contrast, you know? Because like, I guess what, mm. you're, what that study is suggesting is, well... But I guess you like yeah, sort of electronic just, sounds, or yeah. You but like, ex- no, but extrapolating that, like, or t- uh, trying to just sort of make it a broad. It's like almost at some point in your life, you you're done. You can't. You're you can't fixed, accept. Yeah, you're new. fixed at a certain what you like in in things, and after that, it's hard to sort of get new things into that sort of mold of. So, so what yeah. You like. So 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 essentially, what would happen is there would be a generation who would never get rap music because rap music mm. as far as I'm concerned is a is a genre that that hard to to say oh look that's just a derivative of that mm. you know it's a real sort of spoken word thing you know yeah. and so it hits in the in the you know the late 80s or whatever and so there would be a generation that would never mm. ever 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 be able to accept oh I used to like I like rap music mm. whereas there'd be a whole bunch of people who would go no that fell within a certain time frame yeah. that, that I can now absorb that into my you know yeah and I think a lot of the music I like now or bands that I discover later or whatever still somehow fit into yeah Basic part like, of themes. Yeah, I can almost fit them yeah. into. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that they sound Tracks a bit back. like here. They sound a bit like yeah, this yeah. band that I liked. Yeah. So it's almost like yeah, it's hard to. Uh, yeah, I think like, added on to that isn't probably too much for a stretch to say that thing that we've talked about a few times that the music that you love when you're sort of 17, 18 and just having the best years of your life. Mm. For most people the music that you're listening to right then it can almost be beat because it just connects with just a freedom and a maturity yeah. mm, you know absolutely. It, like even if you hear a great great album when you're 27 it's not going to sound as good as no. the same album would have been 10 years before because mm. yeah. you just it's the first time it's hitting you you know what I mean yeah. like, and that's the thing with music it, it's so attached to memories and so attached to the time in your life that you heard it and your experiences and what you it's you hard know. to beat so it, I, I go it back doesn't to have to be good lot. music at that time but if you hear it again now you know 20 whatever years later it takes you back to that moment and all of a sudden you have a new appreciation for it like I hear pop music from the 90s which was atrocious at the time you know but I hear it now 20 years later whatever and you can't I, help but feel nostalgic and I go ah oh, you know I just didn't oh, oh it's actually not that bad no, but it's, yeah. you know it's crap but you, in, oh, the old locomotion but at the same time you know it's crap but at the same time you're going ah oh, but this takes me yeah so it wasn't as bad as I remember. Yeah. You know, like you sort of have a revisionist view of, yeah. of you know. Well, that's why it was funny. Like it takes back, back and then, listening yeah. to see Simple Minds or see Frankie Goes to Hollywood and sort of listening to it more critically um, and finding out that the stuff that they did that was more of the electronic side, and I'm talking about I guess, Simple Minds here, like New Gold Dream, it's like, wow, that was really great. And that was some of their earliest singles. Mm-hmm. Rather than what they did and went on and did kind of pseudo U2 stuff, their earliest stuff mm. was aping a kind of ultravoxy... Well, um, that sort of new wave synth, synth, yeah, synth that's stuff. Right. Yeah, synth, it yeah. was really kind of beautiful and pretty and kind of mm. um, proto-dance music. And, yeah, I mean... It kind of surprises you to find that. Like the first twelve inch I ever got was Frankie goes goes to Hollywood's Welcome to Pleasure Dome, mm. and I'll stand by that record as just one of the most incredible things to bring home and stick on. And it's got like a you know five minute intro to it <laughs> before the bass. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And when it does come in, there's this bass line that just like hits you like a ton of bricks, and mm. you know. And I'll listen to that over and over. Like yeah. even now. And so I just feel so lucky that I st- still think that's a great record. Mm. Like, I'm just, you know, I certainly but, bought lots of shit records. But don't, but don't you think um, that, that that would be the same of each generation, right? So in 20 years' time, 
your kids will be going, oh, you know, what a great song. That's, you know, isn't mm. it great that I still love that? Um, you only have to look at YouTube comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's all like, mm. these were the best time. And it's all the fans of the Stone Roses that were yeah, at the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Because, um, because you know, you, you know, I mean, um, you know, the kids these days don't you exactly. Know, yeah, you know, and you sort I'm of. I'm not you sure know. you appreciate it at the time. A lot of the time, though, as well. Like, no, 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 and no, also, no. I think there's pe- particular people who grow up, and I think Kev, you're one of the people, and Alan potentially as well. Like, potentially, and probably Brett. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you don't know what I'm about to say, but <laughs> um, I am nothing like Alan. Can I just say that right now? <laughs> I think you guys. Oh, I think you, you guys that. very much lived in the time of the music you grew up in. Like, I think you appreciate the music that you grew up in at well, the time. Well, it's Yeah, 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 because I was Do just thinking I mean? that, yeah. Whereas I never appreciated the music I grew up in at the time. I was, like, when I grew up, I grew up in the 80s, I always listened to the 60s, 50s, yeah. 50s originally, and then 60s, and then I sort of slowly worked my way up into the 80s. Dropped on your head? Or no, no, <laughs> no, that's it. I almost caught up to where I should have been, but... You were under a cupboard. I didn't appreciate the music I grew up in at the time I grew up in it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, whereas I think you guys very much lived the music at the time. So, so I envy that your connection to those, to that music and to that is actually connected to your childhoods and is, and to memories that you had at that time as well. You know, like I tell, it, I tell you what's the, the flip of that is that for me. I really wish I'd been around just a few years earlier when punk was breaking or stuff like yeah, that. Sure. You know, like, yeah, sure. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that would have been like, great, you know, to be mm. old enough to have seen those bands playing, mm. you know, and see that thing go through. But yeah, I, I guess it's a bit like, you know, when you're talking about what album did you get up into a band? Mm. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. You go, uh, like, by the time I got to the Smiths, they just split up that year. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, and then I became a massive fan and, you know, it's great running around with the t-shirt on, but we'd never get to see them. Yeah. yeah. But at least um, you were mm. at least contemporary to when Whereas they were, were at like, their peak. Whereas I, I got the Smiths your... in, like, the 90s, you know, like... Or, or you, know, you had your Elton John LPs. <laughs> that's on. It, yeah, mm. that's exactly right. Yeah. So it's like you know, it, but that again, I think it's just it's such a great thing about music that you can. Well, it, it is, is timeless, yeah, and you can really a bit different, like. you can explore it at different times. But I, I do envy those people that that did appreciate, and I, I guess I got to do that with uh, grunge. You know, I think that was the one movement that I actually did live did See live and appreciated yeah. it at the same time it was happening you yeah know? whereas just about every other movement I I, I you know came into it late or I didn't you know I was, I was, I was looking at I was mm. focused on other periods of music when it was happening and didn't come to it till you know later in my it might be something we could talk about that zeitgeist thing like, yeah I think when, that's, when did, when did yeah. everything just like coalesce for you yeah, find yourself yeah. right at the right now I mean mm. yeah, exactly. you know yeah. you felt like I'm you were, here I'm in it yeah <laughs> I'm at the forefront. The wave is breaking. Uh, well, because know. for me, it never happened, right? So, no, no. you know, teenager in the in the 80s. <laughs> I find that hard to point. believe, Brett. <laughs> they'll, they'll drop soon. <laughs> it just never happened. I've heard 50s. I the picked new up my 20. saxophone and I just <laughs> got uh, in a band. and uh, did so, stuck in bebop for the next 40 years. Mm. Right, so, fuck you all. <laughs> um, no, no, but... but you know, uh, uh, in high school, all throughout the eighties and the early eighties, right? Didn't didn't appreciate it. They kept you right? back a bit, and 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 haven't yet. You know, so lots of eighties nostalgia. The 80s. Yeah. yeah, yeah, lots of eighties nostalgia. Really, yeah. You know, oh, I love this stuff. It's really cool. Mm. And I'm still going. Nah. You know, get for it, me, yeah. it was What's always this angled music. <laughs> you were always a what's a synth crap a couple of decades back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who is this Duran Duran? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a saxophone, Bobby Keys. Such a man. Thank you. Um, but that, but yeah, but so so not living in the moment and mm. haven't got to the point where I go, hey, that was really cool. No. You know, the Thompson Twins and Culture Club. You know, yeah, that was yeah, awesome. Yeah. How yeah. awesome the Bronski beat. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Haven't gone. Yeah. That's really cool. So I know mm. I know you really do. Yes. And my wife really does. But I'm yeah. at the moment still going no. <laughs> So so you're, you're waiting for your I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it to, to come <laughs> in. Right, right, the, yeah. the, the, the problem for me is there have been very few bands it's where I've gone. Uh, where they are now is where I'm at. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So do you feel? Yeah. Do you feel there was ever a band that hit that you felt? Yep. 
I'm on board at the time there. Yeah, but, but the problem is, you know, and for me it would be the Black Crows. It's only because yeah, they, they were 1970s. Sound. They were 1970s 70, early, yeah, yeah. you know, stadium yeah, rock yeah. <laughs> was where I was at. Sure. Gee, and no, so I thought Alan was weird. <laughs> yeah, that's really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. quite out there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that's not, and that, and so had they been, you know, whatever, no, it wouldn't happen. But because mm. they were nostalgic enough at the right time for me, then mm. it just. Sure. But, but so it do you think, sort of feel you think like, Radiohead was the same for you in that way as well? I came to Radiohead late. Yeah, well, not completely not too late. late, didn't you? Not too late. I mean, I don't. Know. When did you get in? When did you get into Radiohead? The, the big thing for me is because I was always trying to work out because OK Computer was this massive album and, and I didn't get into it, mm-hmm. uh, was the year I got married, right? So you just miss And in fact, it was the month I got married was when they dropped uh, it. Miss it completely. Just too busy right. or whatever. Mm, yeah. And came I into bet. it. Came into it about 10 years later. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> really busy. Um, <laughs> so came into it much later on and then went back and thought, wow, that was really cool. Yeah. So again, you know, not mm. really, you mm-hmm. know. Mm. Not never really there with a when it when it's happening. Yeah, well, I, it took a it took a friend of mine to say to me because I yeah at that when right like just going on Radiohead right quickly just for a little bit because that was probably the band. You know, if we're talking about bands that you know lost you at some point, whatever, then yeah, Radiohead unfortunately lost me after probably Kid A, I'd say Amnesiac. I did like How to the Thief. That's where I came back in. How to the Thief. Kid A. Kid A, yeah. Okay. I went away, I come back. Um, but I was like, oh, hello. That, yeah, for me, <laughs> hey, they... What are you off to? I felt like I was part of... I felt like I was almost, yeah, matching up. I, like I I was into Oasis, mm. you know. Mm. I was into the Britpop sort of stuff, you know, generally, you know. I, th- I felt like I was... That was the first... I think Britpop in the, the early 90s Britpop or the mid early mm. to mid-90s Britpop... For me, that was the point where I felt like I almost came back in sync with... You can get it. Yeah, I, like, I almost yeah. felt like I was back in tune with what was happening now. And I think... And so Oasis Blue. Yeah, and yeah, uh, Pulp Verve. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah like, um, but I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that, okay, yes, they were d- deriving a lot of the sound from mm. some of that earlier stuff that I really liked, you mm. know, and... I love Oasis, and I think they they were fantastic. And I, to this day, I think they were, they were fantastic. I think they took it to another level, mm. but they were certainly derivative. You know, a lot of those bands were derivative of the original Britpop yeah. sound. You know, and that's fine. You, you know, everyone builds on top of everybody else. But I think so. At that period, I thought, okay, yeah, I'm I'm back in tune a little bit with what's actually happening sort of right now. But then a mate of mine said, oh, but have you heard, you know, Radiohead? I think you'd really like Radiohead. And I'm like, Radiohead? Oof, I've never heard it, you know. Because mm. it was still the alternate sound. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, your Oasis was your popular sound. It was on radio. Oh, uh, sorry, Radiohead at the time. Not, you know, And yeah. they, had, they hadn't they had released, OK, or they just released, OK, or about to release OK Computer. They had the bands, they had Pablo Honey. Um, you know, but it was still very much on your sort of, you know, university radio, yeah, it was yeah. on your alternate Triple J stuff. And no, I wasn't, I wasn't listening to that, you know, I was more, you know, just popular mm. stuff. So I remember, yeah, he said, oh, look, I think you'd like Radiohead. Whatever. So the first album I actually listened to was OK Computer. And I listened to it a couple of times and was like, this, what the fuck? This is shit. Like, what am yeah, I listening yeah. to? You know, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> How the fuck would he think I like this? Like, I like melodic, like I like yeah, Brit yeah, poppy yeah. type. I like, I want song structure. I want, you know, whatever. And, but I kept, you know, I kept giving it a go and I just thought, and then eventually it just sort of clicked and I was like, holy, this is, this is amazing. Like, mm. this is this is really good. And then I went back and listened to, at the time it was only the Benz and, and mm. Pablo that, that they put out, you know. And then, I, But then I I remember going back and trying to track, you know, singles that weren't on the albums. And yeah. I wanted everything that Reddy had done at that point. You know, like I was like, <sighs> I had to have to consume everything that you are so done. ripe to be a full fan. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like this tender young fruit. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> so it's like, just ready, you know, to fall off the tree. And then I was I thought, I thought, all, but I thought this is these are these guys are these are real contenders here. Like yeah, these yeah. are these are next level stuff. Yeah. 
And then they bring out, you know, Kid A, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, no, all right, I can come with you on that. You've, you've tried a different direction. Hmm. And I'm thinking, all right, now come back. Come back somewhere oh. else. You know, <laughs> nope, amnesiac, yeah. straight into the same stuff. And then it's like, Rainbow all right, how far are we going to go? Yeah, <laughs> how yeah, far are we yeah. going down this rabbit hole? And then I just couldn't, yeah, I coun't, I yeah. couldn't follow. Oh, look, I've enjoyed, look, I still I, I buy the albums. I, yeah. I still listen to them. I enjoy it. But it's it, they've just never they've lost me on the whole. They were just never, you know, okay computer again. So weird, so weird. Because that's that's when okay computer when you dipped out. I can't I can't even I can't remember. I'd, I'd have to see the albums kind of written down in a, in an order yeah. for me to remember. But well, it was Pablo, you know, Ben's okay computer, Kid A, Amnesiac. How to the Thief, and then it went into the ones that I couldn't remember. It was like, then it's, I think it's yeah, Rainbows. Yeah, in Rainbows. Yeah, and I think when Hail to the Thief came out after um, KD, I just, like, had a newfound respect for them. But I never loved loved them, like, with my heart. I just kind of felt like they were a band for other people to love. Mm. Like, I remember even coming to Australia, and there was friends of my girlfriend at the time who were, like, you know, four or five years younger, and they're all, like, raving about radio, and I'm going, oh, bless. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like me with the Smiths when I was in <laughs> Everyone gets, you know, that first love, that band, you know, patting them on the head. And then, like, ten years later, I'm at Boondle Entertainment Centre just dancing mm. my head off mm. to these guys because live they're just phenomenal and mm. once they built up that catalogue you know and, and just the musicianship and like the tightness of the band and like that kind of the time signal changes and mm. the, the jazz drumming and all that like it just became you know impossible to ignore what a good show it was without actually loving them in fact I, kept, yeah. I think they even managed to keep a distance somehow like <laughs> almost like they're not interviews and like personable people you know and the, the atmosphere is quite cold and and that was just you know all manna from heaven to me it was like well now you're now you're yeah you probably should people but always tell people like because i'm very proud of it is that we we saw them in this tiny pub mm. in glasgow and yeah that first gig was just fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Like, mm, mm. They really had something, you know, just as a group. Like, even though that was Pablo Honey time and someone said, oh, do you want to go see this band? And like, the name, so we went, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's really wild. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and spent the whole weekend in Glasgow having a party um, and kind of raving about the show, it seemed. Yeah. Mm. And you kind of never forget that. And then, like... We own them. Me and my mates own them. We, yeah, we saw them, it. you know, way back. So, but you didn't have an issue with those guys when they made it big. No, nothing. No, no. I just didn't want to be their biggest fan because I felt like yeah. I was cheating or something. But it is you do, and I think that's one of the things as 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 you know, what you might term as serious music fans, whatever. Like I think you, when you discover somebody that you think you're the only one who knows about this, yeah, you, know, you want to share it with maybe a few friends, and then as soon as that band breaks it. You're like ah, you know, it's philosophy. ruined. To me, it's like or... they're ruined. Like you want to, it's like you want to have ownership over them, and you only want them to, yeah. you know. See, see what they did. What they did. What I loved as a music fan was they went from Pablo Honey, which wasn't the world's best album, had a couple of great songs on it, and you know, still a great band, right? And this is pre, pre, pre Britpop, but it was a Britpop record. It was yeah, yeah. fucking great, mm. punchy little songs. Then they just broke through, and everyone loved them, and it was OK Computer, and it was the Bands and. Um, and I was like, good on you. And then when they like came out with something fucking nasty and like difficult, like Kid A, I was like, ha 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 ha, yeah. <laughs> right this will piss them all off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get them back. No, nice. you know what I mean? Nice. Yeah, and that's fair enough. Which is because it has. It's be, they've twisted. become, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. They've yeah, lost yeah. that mainstream appeal again. And it's really, I mean, seriously, like, you're right. I mean, uh, now it's only yeah. hardcore fans that follow them now. Like, you know. The, the oh, next album yeah. that comes out, it's not going to be. For a, for a while there, it was like yeah, pop know, people hang yeah. wait. Oh, when's the Nick Radiohead coming? Like it's you know, yeah, it's true fans who are going to go. Oh, Radiohead's just dropped an album. Oh, when when they put out Paranoid Android, 
I had to, like that was a cultural moment because it was just like a fucking incredible record. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's still it's you my know? second favorite. It's sorry, it's in my top five five records of all time. Okay, computer. Yeah. Still. Yeah. I mean that 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 single alone. <laughs> a yeah, bit like insane. Pablo Honey with insane. Creep it was just like yep yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. fucking incredible it was, but it was when they put out Kid A and they were brave enough to do something yeah but Excuse that's what me. I loved I love that growth it was like utterly tiny and difficult and you know unanthemic and unstadium mm-hmm. I went, but I loved, so, so essentially what you're saying is like um, revolution number nine <laughs> something that may not be you know Listenable. Mass appeal, listenable, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but let's, that, that's very brave of them to do. Fucking no, idiot. no, because <laughs> because I thought Kitty was gorgeous and lovely and very listenable. Look, I think yeah, Kid A, Kid A was great as a as a. This is our next. Yeah, we've gone from Pablo. Which it was is, a political which statement. Is very grand. They were saying we're not going to. We've gone we're not bands. Be a yeah. band. Yeah, yeah. we've gone bands, which was uh, we're going to be a studio more band, polished. Yeah. But not you wouldn't call it grunge. It was it was more alternate, more experimental. Kid A completely experimental, but I was sorry, Kid A, uh, OK Computer, just incredible album. More experimental, pushing musical directions. Kid A, yes, we're pushing it even further, but then it just sort of like there was this progression, and I just thought, holy shit, these guys are contenders. Like they could take the mantle from someone like the Beatles. <gasps> but then wow did, what? You, did you, everyone hear that but then the shittles but then, it, <laughs> but then once, it, but once I got to once I got to Kid A it was like well would that they just stayed they just stayed in that gear you know they haven't they've really not pushed it Mm, but that depends I what guess what they really need to do is go back and revisit some of their early stuff rehash that for half the album <laughs> and then you know do some covers Shunk of somebody else to call it their own work yeah. are you talking about like a monochromatic cover as well it's just yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe just just, like gray, maybe if it's just gray red, they could have the red album no the grey album the grey album yes. the grey it's got to be grey uh huh yeah, yeah, yeah. Be great. nice I think yeah. it's got legs. to the Thief came out and I was like I was back on board that yeah point. I, lo- I really I love Tyler because I, I, love, they, I love all them. What they did was, was they, a particularly strong. They went. Well, we've, we've done a little testing ground. We're mm. we're, we're going to stay difficult and. Well, how, how of the Thief was coming back more towards yeah it was the but OK it, Computer it was, Ben's it, it was it was with the stop gap of it had actual Kitty. songs that had and then they went know, melodies and, and, and choruses rainbows, and stuff which I think was really harking back and some people think it was written mm. way back then I will say the Moonshape Pool um, the new album the latest album very good album excellent and it's a return to form if you like like it's and again it, I think it's more because it actually has more song structure and so, maybe so, I'm just a sucker, a sucker for something that at least has some kind of I'm happy for it to be progressive and go here and there and back and whatever but I feel like it needs some kind of structure so who, who, who's a band that's, that's left you at the gate you know, and you've never and you've never been back. Never been back. You, they've spurned you. They've spurned your love, and, uh, yeah, well, and you've uh, just well, walked away. There's been a the few. Beatles. The Beatles really <laughs> burned him out at some Beatles, point. That After that white album, album. Once, once I broke <laughs> up, that was it. Yeah. White album. Uh, <laughs> um, well, like you two, yeah, Achtung Baby was my final U2 album. I couldn't follow them on to the whole, you know, Lemon and the whole mm. pop period and that sort of stuff. Yeah, couldn't do that. Um, they could still write a great single. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah. I think there's, there's, yeah. I'm trying to think of other bands. Um, when did you leave Elton behind? <laughs> Elton after 1928. No, 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 no. You, uh, Too Low for Zero was 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 a pretty good album. Yeah, I think after. Uh, well, for me, Elton's probably gone even after like. Uh, Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. I think that's the final good album he did. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. The expression on Kev's face. Yeah. And on that note, <laughs> uh, I heard about this band today called Captain Squid Liquor. <laughs> Squid I was like, oh, that man. is nasty. <laughs> um, all right, Meatloaf. When did you get off Meatloaf? Oh, after Bad Out of Hell. Um, this Mid- is pop Midlife is okay, a very different animal, all right? 
literally. Like it's a different it's a different thing. It's a different podcast. It's a different podcast, <laughs> but it's also different because, you know, the talent isn't with me. Even though he's got he's you know, the, the delivery He's the front man. He's the front man. The front man. The delivery and the vocal is there. Um, it's Jim is Steinman it as the songwriter that is the core of that. It's like going to a see cats the musical and saying oh that singer who did that is fantastic like cats is about andrew lloyd Webber, right it's it's about the songwriter and and you have to or, or at, what's the other you have to look at meatloaf as more like a, a musical production and he's yes he's out there singing it but it's okay. jim steinman the songwriter who's put, it, the, put it this way kev with ben, bernie Taupin, where would elton john be no right. right but ben would do anything Shit for loves but he won't do wife. that <laughs> That's right. Elton John didn't even want to be a singer. He he wanted just to be a songwriter. Yeah. It was it was he was forced to sing and then he had a career. But without Torp and he's nothing. Nothing. But I mean they're not song still for, doing song stuff. For guy. Together, they? Song they for guy. They are still doing stuff. Really? But you could still say you could say that about lo- so many people though. You know, it's not like you can't. And that's the thing you can't just discount. Like you can go, I, I, I can say, oh, Meatloaf would be nothing without Jim Stein, but Jim Stein would be nothing without Meatloaf. He tried, Jim Steinman tried to have a solo career. He couldn't because he needed someone to deliver that. You know, so like if they're both nothing with each without each other, <laughs> I'm just thinking, aren't they nothing together? <laughs> it's like zero plus zero. That's the oh, mathematician oh, coming out again. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, oh. no, no. Bonnie Tyler, mate. Bonnie Tyler. Bonnie Tyler. Bonnie Tyler. Yeah, written by Jim Steinman. Yeah, she yeah. wrote Total Eclipse of the Heart, written by Jim Total Steinman. Eclipse of the Heart. One of the uh-huh. great, great, great songs. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a lovely 80s ballad. <laughs> so maybe Bonnie's got something. She bought something <laughs> off the party. They both, had, they both had hair at some point. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I think we better tie it up there. We've, we're running, running, running long. Running long. So. Hard to believe. Thank you very much for listening and uh, join us again on the next amazing adventure of.